Do you enjoy thrifting, crafting, sewing, turning ugly things into cute things? If you said yes to any of those, you should keep watching because today we're going to be doing the ultimate guide to thrift flipping. Hello and welcome. This is a place to inspire and to be inspired. My name is Bianca and I love doing anything craft related, whether it's crocheting, sewing, thrifting, or just learning new hobbies in general. It is right up my alley and hopefully yours too if you're watching this video. I know a lot of people love thrifting, but not everyone knows how to thrift flip. And I think it's a super useful skill to have. But as you might be able to guess, one of the biggest things that you're going to need if you're going to be doing this kind of project is a sewing machine. My sewing machine is a Singer Fashion Mate. I could be wrong, but I believe it's an affordable, beginner-friendly sewing machine, and it is what I use for all of my projects. In the future, would I love to upgrade? Yes. But for now, it does the job. And I'll make sure it's linked below. The whole premise behind thrift flipping is we're taking something from a thrift store and then turning it into something else. We are repurposing it, recycling it, so that we can give it a new life. So for example, maybe I will find a long maxi skirt and I will chop it to turn it into a mini skirt and then I will use the leftover fabric to make a top so it's a two-piece matching set. Or maybe I'll take a pair of men's Levi's and cut them up and make a denim tote bag. This is where you let your creativity shine. You pretty much need to go into the thrift store with an open mind and you have to say to yourself, what could I turn this into? How can I repurpose this? And I think it's really fun to think outside of the box. You can take a skirt and turn it into a dress. You can take a pair of shorts and turn it into a top. The options are truly endless. Step one is to find your thrift store. Step two is to have a lot of patience and time. You need to go through every item. You need to go through the extra smalls, the smalls, the mediums, the large, the extra large. You also don't need to only look in the women's section. You can look in the kids' section. You can look in the men's section. You can thrift flip just about anything you find at the thrift store. If it is a fabric or a textile, you can definitely turn it into clothing. So now it's time to head to the first thrift store of the day. The key to not feeling overwhelmed when you walk into the thrift store is to have some idea of what colors you're looking for, what fabrics you're looking for, and of what you might want to make. So say I really wanted to make a two-piece set, I know that I need enough fabric to make that two-piece set. So I'm not going to be looking at shorts or mini skirts. I'm going to be looking at pants and long maxi skirts and long dresses. And if I want something to be long lasting, I'm not going to choose something that feels super cheap. I don't mind certain polyesters as long as they feel okay. I choose to just stay away from anything Shein or anything of that quality. I love finding denim and cotton and linen is also always a great find. I'm going to keep this skirt here a maxi skirt. I just want to alter it to fit me a little bit better. I wanted to like this one so much, but unfortunately the fabric was just a cheap velvety material. I really love this one, but I just bought a denim dress from TJ Maxx a few weeks ago and I don't need to. For this one, I think the pattern is adorable. That means we have potential to actually turn it into something that could be really cute. And I don't know about you, but I have been seeing Y2K inspired midi skirts all over the place, especially the paisley pattern. And speaking of the paisley midi skirts, here's another one. The cut of this one was a little bit different, so I'm just not a fan. I really tried to see the potential in this one, but I feel like it would just sit in my closet. We thrifted four items today. These are the two that I'm gonna be flipping. The other two, we're gonna be leaving them as skirts. I just need to make some alterations to them. So that will be a separate video. This one, the brand is Princess Highway, and I did look it up online. It's an Australian brand, and a lot of their fabrics are viscose cotton blends. It definitely feels like cotton or linen, and this one is just from Target. Stop. I really liked the pattern of this, and I have some plans for it, which I will tell you guys about right now. So this one I picked up at the second thrift store that I went to. As soon as I saw this, it reminded me of all the Pinterest pictures that I've been seeing of outfits with the lace maxi skirt with the oversized t-shirt. Something like this. I wasn't a big fan of the material. It did feel pretty cheap. But the more I looked at it, the more potential I saw. And to flip this, all I need to do is cut it just below the bust, add in a waistband, and cut out the liner so that it will be more sheer. This will probably be the first one I do today because I think it will be the easiest. And this is what we're going to be working with for our second flip. I just think this is so adorable. The pattern is so cute. I'm not a fan of the dress style. It's not my style at all. But the fabric was good and the pattern is really cute. It's definitely giving cottage. I feel like I should be baking a little pie in this. Very cute, but I'm going to be chopping it in half. My plan for this is to make one of those little tie front tops. I think if I cut this at the waist, remove the buttons, and then use the leftover fabric from the bottom to make some ties, and then attach them to make a tie front top. I think for me, it'll be a lot more modern and trendy and something that I will actually wear. So now we can start cutting them up and hoping that they turn out the way that we imagine. So fingers crossed. Aside from scissors and a sewing machine, for this project, we're only really gonna need some elastic. I wouldn't do anything thinner than this. It's about an inch wide. So I'm gonna cut 
a couple inches below the armpits just to make sure that I have extra. This type of material will definitely unravel if you mess with it too much. Once I'm done cutting this, I'm gonna try not to mess with it too much because I don't want it to unravel and make my life harder. This liner, luckily, is attached on the sides all the way down, so I don't have to worry about this coming undone. And I'll bring you guys closer now so you can see what I'm showing you here. So this is the liner here, and this is the lacy outside. And you can see here that this liner is attached on this side here. So this here would be a perfect fit, but I want it to be a little bit snug. So I'm going to pull it a little bit and that feels about right. And I'm going to give an extra inch and a half and then cut. So this is what we're going to be using for our waistband. So now we have our cut waistband. I'm going to find the center of the waistband. And I'm going to mark it on both sides just to make sure that I can see it. And I'm going to start with this side and I'm going to put the center against this side here and I'm going to fold it down once and I'm going to use our little clip here. So now I'm going to go to my sewing machine and I'm going to do a stitch up and down this way right here just to lock this in place. Put it under a sewing machine this way. And I'm just going to turn this to get the needle into the fabric so that I can pull it a little bit without it coming undone. So the waistband, we're going to keep it folded over, but we're going to pull the waistband and then pinch it here. So the elastic under here is being pulled, but this fabric is not being pulled. That way the whole thing will be stretchy. Every time that I stop the sewing machine to readjust, I want to make sure that the needle is in my fabric. That way I can pull on this without it moving from this spot. So now we want to keep this folded over it, making sure that we're still pulling on this fabric here. And we want this to go a little bit past the other side. So once we fold this over here, and now we can continue all the way down. So now this is how it's looking from the inside, and this is how it's looking from the outside. And now we're gonna do the same thing, but we're just gonna do another seam a little bit below this one. So now we just flipped it around and we're gonna do the same thing to the other side. This is what it looks like from the inside and here's how it's looking from the outside. This is how we're looking now that we finished the waistband. It still has plenty of stretch to it to get it up over our hips. And for me the length is perfect. It hits right at my ankles but we're not done yet. We still need to cut out the lining so that it has more of that sheer look that we're going for. So this little red mark here is where I want to keep the liner and then from here down is where I'm going to be cutting it out. So as a reminder, this was what we were going for, and this is what we got. Did we get close? Because I think we nailed it. I think this definitely gives the same vibe. It's not quite lace. It's kind of like a crochet knitted lace, but I think it gives the same look, and I could have purchased this online for a heftier price tag, but we were able to make it for seven bucks. And if the oversized t-shirt isn't your thing, you could also pair this with a baby tee. And this is how she looks styled with a baby tee and some different boots. I thought this time I would try them with like some knee-high western boots. I really feel like there's a ton of different ways that you can style these. You can easily wear boots with this and then layer it with jackets or sweaters as well. So for this dress, my plan is to cut this hem off and I'm going to use this hem because it's already folded so nicely. I'm going to seam rip this and then I'm going to add this hem to the bottom here because if I just cut it here, it's not gonna be quite long enough. It'll be way too cropped for me. 
And if I cut it here, then this here is gonna look a little bit too frilly since it's pleated here. I'm going to remove these buttons and then I'm debating on just leaving these holes or I could just fold this side under and then sew it that way. And then I'm gonna have a little tie here at the top and maybe one more here in the middle and then the rest I will leave it open, I think. We'll see how that works. <laughs> Cute little wiggle butt. Oh, where are you going? Where's your ball? Oh, we kisses. Oh, good girl. Then we have little duck. He's just being cute as ever. Boop, boop. So here's how we're looking right now after we cut this bottom part off. I did end up folding this to hide where we had the little holes for the buttons. So now we have a clean seam here and a clean seam on this side as well. And then this strip here is the hem from the bottom of the dress that we took off. And we're just going to be attaching this to the bottom here. And since this was the hem from the dress, it already looks super clean. So I'm going to use the other side. So I'm going to need to measure from here to the center. That way I can use these two end pieces and then I will just attach them together in the middle. Now we can attach it and just make sure that we have the correct length and make sure that it fits. And now that we have this piece held together by our clips, now we can start to sew. So we finished adding our hem to the bottom of this to give us a little extra length. And we're going to cut and sew our strips to make the ties before we iron. That way we can just iron everything together at one time. So this is our leftover fabric that we're going to use to make a few little strips. And I will just cut about two inch strips like this. And then I'll show you guys how I turn them into the straps. So now that we have our four strips cut, now we're gonna do the ironing. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold one side to the center, we're gonna iron that all the way down, fold the other side to the center, iron all the way down, and then we will fold it one more time, and then we'll iron it like this as well. And then we will sew a simple stitch across here at the opening so it doesn't come undone, and then we can attach it to our top. So now the final step is going to be attaching these straps and I'm going to use these little clips to hold them in place until I sew them. So I'm gonna do one there and I'll do one, I think maybe I'll do one just below. So about here. Are you freaking kidding me? I love this so much. I think it turned out so cute. It's exactly what I had envisioned in my mind. Actually, it's better than I imagined. It's freaking adorable. It's so cute. We nailed it. We nailed both of them, in my opinion. Honestly though, this was my favorite. I think this turned out the best. The skirt was good, but the waistband could have been a little bit cleaner, but the way that I envisioned it with oversized t-shirts, the waistband didn't really matter that much. I just can't get over it. So I will show you guys a couple close-ups now. So that is it for this video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I would love to know your feedback on what kind of videos you like seeing from me, whether that's my thrifting videos, my crocheting videos, or my sewing videos. Please let me know down below and until next Friday, bye.